Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. All right, so it's April and it's the Roxy Creations Journal of Stitchery and our prompts this week is um, quilt or vintage quilt and a little house, country cottage. So it's taken me a good week to even get to this point and even then I'm still not sure if I'm on the point. I just can't decide what a, what colours to work my piece in, which really is dictated by what pieces of quilt I have. I have some um, quilt in a stash that I bought from someone in America and it's got little anchors all over it. So it's sort of not suitable to this country cottage thing. It's more of a beach cottage and I, I'm just not inspired by it. So I had to go hunting and I found this piece, which was a quilt that I was going to make at some point, but never got to it, but it's all pieced together with the background. So I have this as a potential starting point and in amongst it is a few pieces of um, embroidery that I'd completed and was obviously going to use as part of this project. I think it was actually gonna be a table runner. So I've got these random pieces and I thought, oh, I wonder if there's a quilt a, a sorry a house in there but no unfortunately there isn't an apple tree but not a little house so for a week I've been looking at this color combination and I really felt like I wanted to do something tartan so I had this little piece of fabric as well so this is where I was sitting for about a week and then I was like well what type of house do I want to do and in my head I was wanting it to be very um floral and in garden around it and embroidery and things like that and this sort of just didn't pull it together for me it's still not off the table but I'm having a bit of a play now with another color combination and I've started to sketch the house now in order to assist me because I'm in Australia and there's not a lot of country cottages in Australia they're completely different to what I have in my mind as a country cottage say in England so I hopped on the internet and found myself a photo of a country cottage, a real classic, beautiful cottage. So I'll just bring it up to the camera. And that picture has so many opportunities for embroidery from the layers to the floral, to the fence, just so much. So that's the start of my inspiration, which then brought me back to this. And I'm thinking, well, it sort of will work with the tartans. I can see a whole house evolve out of the tartan, but this is definitely out. So then I went looking for something else that could be the base to my um, project. So I'm gonna put this aside for the moment and I've come back to this piece. So what I found in my mum's linen cupboard was this old piece of um, linen with this little blue flower stitched on it, which sort of became the start of the next project. It's a cross stitch. I don't think it's hand done because to me, that back looks like a machine. If, if someone did that, I'm very impressed, but my feeling is that is a machine. It's just too, too uniformed, if you know what I mean. So I've got this little piece of linen and what I did is I want that blue flower to be the foreground of my cottage. Now, my plan is to actually cut that flower out so it'll be separate. But I thought before I do, I'm going to have a play around with sketching a little house. So what I did first is I got the cover of another journal that's coming into play because my stitchery journal is nearly full and I want to make another one. But before the cover goes on to the journal, I thought I'll just get it and I'll draw around the perimeter of the cover because my existing journal is the same cover. So I did that and that gives me my boundaries. Then I had a really good look at my little house and I had to get my distances right to this embroidery. So using a... Um, fix on pen which is a heat pen that you can iron it. I've been sitting here for the last 
20 minutes with my little iron and she's on she's hot you watch i will burn myself on camera i hope not but it's perilously dangerous so we're going to put it over the side there i can hear it clicking just to remind me that it's you know working so what i thought i'd do is i know i want to cut this out and i know i want to include it onto an embroidery i now know the perimeter of my stitchery and i found myself a house that does inspire me it's got plenty of windows and lots of little elements that can be you know added I then, looking at this colour scheme, I thought, well, how am I going to include quilt into it? So I went hunting through my stash and I found these two pieces of quilt that I think could blend with my cottage. So they became the snippets ready for adding into this. I really then started thinking about lace and it really is a passion of mine. I just love anything crocheted in the way of lace. So I'm starting to think I've got something now that my little cottage is going to be snippets of lace and crocheting to match this doily of, um, um, what do you call it? Um, cross stitch here, this placemat. So I then started sketching just to get my proportions right. And the beautiful thing about these pens is let's say you make a line you don't like, you can pick up your little iron and just touch your fabric and it's gone. Just like that. And then you can come back and draw in where you want your new line. Now this little cottage has these funny little caps on the roof which I think with curvy bottoms on them is just perfect for lace look at that that shape there and even over the window there's a, a curved piece that sits over the window it's just got great potential for little bits of lace I'm thinking it's going to be quite a challenge to find all the bits to add to it but I think I think it really has something of a charm about it. The other thing that is in the back of my mind, that if I didn't want to use um, quilt on my house, like I make it all um, doilies and lace snippets, I was thinking I could do a clothesline with a couple quilts hanging from it. But that would make my house really small and be at a distance. Like there could be a clothesline here with a path leading up to a house that's sitting more up here and the house would be quite small. And I thought, oh, the house is such an opportunity to play with lace that that idea sort of left me quite quickly. So whether I can incorporate a fence with quilt hanging over it, I was thinking along those lines, but my flower is so big. And I want the flower to nearly be overpowering the house and the house is in the, in the background. So even this house might have to be a little bit smaller when I go to actually make it. So that's basically where I'm at. I'm pretty sure I want a lace house. I'm not 100% sure on the size. This may be too big or maybe I over-exaggerate the house and then the flowers are over-exaggerated. Just not 100% sure. So that's why I thought I'd turn the camera on so you can sort of see the process that I'm thinking about. Now, a couple other elements that I've found that I do want to bring into this is I've found my quilt of some description. So whether that becomes part of the roof or trimmings on windows, not sure yet. I've got this lace here that I absolutely love and it's got a scalloped edge already. Whether that could be somewhere in it I, I just don't know or is that just going to be worked into the background oh i don't know i love these projects because the longer i don't know the more i seem to enjoy it and this is another element that i've got it came off of a pillow slip and it's um some ribbon embroidery whether this is the right piece for it you know what i'm going to say i don't know we will see so that's sort of where i'm at whether that could be over the house, 
Oh gosh, there's so many things we could do. Anyway, I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to think about this a little bit more. This is the first week of April. We're coming up to Easter. So I've got plenty of time. I don't want to rush this because I think it's got huge potential for embroidery and layers and just really interesting elements. So what I will probably do next is draw this design again, but on the end of this runner. So I like that little blue edge too. So I definitely want to include that, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to draw this down the other end. And then this will actually be the piece that I use as my background and then start layering from there. That way I can cut out my little embroidery here and I'm just going to be using this as my actual backing fabric. And then I can start layering and adding in lots of different textures and eventually getting to somewhere of adding in the quilt. Okay, I was gonna just say with this quilt, this is a um, modern quilt, but it's probably about 10 years old. So it's a, a recently purchased um, quilt, aged in our generation, if you will. So it's not exactly vintage, but um, I think the colors is where it's sort of taking me and at least I don't have to go and create some little pieces of quilt to pull this project off. All right, I'm gonna turn the video off. I'm gonna have a little bit more of a play. But that's where I'm heading with this project and the whole thing is based around this one embroidery. So let's see where this takes us. Okay everyone, I'll see you all in a moment. Bye. Okay, I'm back. Now, what I've done is I've cut out the doily embroidered piece that was sitting here. I still have my sketch of my house. I'm gonna use that as my reference for sizing and things like that in the future. So I've just spun the napkin around and I've redrawn the uh, perimeter that my cover is. So I honestly could go a fraction bigger on some of these sides because I could have um, lace hanging out of my journal or lace out the top. I've um, now cut out my little flower and pinned it into position. But what I did do is I left the fabric on the bottom. Now, the reason I did that is I'm not 100% sure where in this corner this embroidery is going to go. So I'm at the moment I'm thinking it's right on the bottom. But let's say I need to lift it a little bit. I can then turn this up and give myself a little bit more fabric at the very bottom of the piece, like so. So it's just a bit of a, a fail safe that just in case I need that little extra, it's there waiting for me. So I'm just going to now pin that because I know I wanna do some embroidery in front of those flowers. So I'm just gonna pin that there for now. The next thing I've got to do is lay down my background. So let's move away from the whole house thing at the minute because we need to get some structure in the background. So I went through my box of tricks and I found some pieces that I had actually got from Rachel um, herself. So I thought what a perfect place to use some of these textiles. I'm not 100% sure what they all are. I'm just gonna say hemp for everything, old hemps and linens and things like that. That's a linen, but that to me looks like hemp. It's just so beautiful, it's very coarse. So I want to lay down some of these pieces. So I thought I'll bring you along for the journey. We're gonna pop down some random pieces. I'm just gonna trim that. Then once I've filled the background with all of these textures, textiles, I'll then um, use invisible stitch like we do to stitch down all of the elements into position. And then I can start sketching back in our little house. So this is all about the background now. The other thing I found in amongst my bits and pieces was this little piece of fabric. How close is that to that? So I was quite excited when I saw that. 
I thought, well, I definitely have to use this little piece somewhere. So whether it's on the house or we work it into the background, I'm thinking we'll save it for the house because it's too sweet to not use color wise. And the other thing I noticed is the green in my doily is very bright, like modern bright. The green in this is more of an olive green, olive green, which, but the blue and the yellow is very similar, which then brings me to this piece, which is olive and the um, yellows. So it's like I've found a connecting piece of fabric that drifts me from modern in modern tones, I guess, brightness into more subdued colors. So I'm really happy with this fine now, and I'm just about positive that I'm going to put this piece of embroidery somewhere where I'm not 100% sure yet, of course, because you just never know. So I'm gonna put them aside. They're a definite will turn up somewhere and just keep fiddling around here with this background now. I want to see as much of this as possible so I think I will keep it to there because otherwise the house will cover everything. I'm going to take that away for the minute and put this piece of Osmerberg in. It's um, from Australia this one but it'll give a nice background there. Maybe pull that down a little bit. I do want to use some of this, but I don't want to use all of it behind the little house. So I'm just going to cut a piece off so that at least it peeks out behind the roof of the house. That's the thing with this. I've got all these gorgeous fabrics that are treasures, but, and my house is so big. So the last thing I want to do is um, have the house covering most of the treasures, if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to work around, I think, the perimeter of my design first with treasures, and then maybe in behind the house where things are going to be hidden an awful lot will be um, just concentrating here so I'm going to stop talking here and there will be fabrics that are less of a treasure if that makes sense okay so I'm liking that am I liking that yeah I'll pull that over a little bit because I can afford to be a little bit bigger in my embroidery size, the overall size. So we might as well push the boundaries. I can always trim it back. That Osmerberg, I think I'm going to pull it up a little bit because that's a common fabric here and it's, um, yeah, we can use that for behind the house and then have all these beautiful Rachel fabrics poking out from around the side. And I like how that's a little bit lower than these because if I use lace for the house, I can now build this up and it's gonna bring it up to the level that some of these thicker fabrics are. So I'm gonna trim off this little bit down here because I'm happy with that. And I wonder if I can incorporate some of this. No, it's just not quite right. Let's put this little guy back into position. Might just have to pull that down a fraction. So that fits there. Yep. I'm liking that.
right, well, I'm thinking that is going to work. I do need something up this side. I wonder if I do. Just a bit of that again. Okay. Pull that right off because I guess I don't need all of that fabric showing, but yeah, I'm I'm liking that. And then our house will sit in there. There'll be a lacy roof, the side boundary to the house, the door will come up behind. I, th I think that is going to need to go right to the bottom, like so. Because otherwise my door, I don't think, will fit into shot. Will be enough of a door to sort of get a feeling for where this house will go. So I'm just going to do a rough sketch now just to make sure that my shapes will come together and then we had the little roof the single section of roof sort of come through the top here with the back section of roof coming through here there's sort of a front portico part of the house this fabric's not as easy to sketch on as the last which is fine because we did do a a basic sketch so we sort of know the structure of our little house by doing the sketch first of all so we've got a window here our door needs to come right up in size because the top of the door always meets the top of the window. Okay, I can fatten up the front of that because we've got plenty of boundary over there. I don't know if you can see these lines because it's quite faint. Okay, and then there was a, a window over here. Be quite a challenge to do this, I think, using all of these textiles. I think if I can persevere, it'll be beautiful, but it is going to be a challenge to embroider through them all. Okay. Here's the picture of my little house. I just need a bit of a reference here. Okay, so there's, there's a little window up on that roof. We've got plenty of room for our chimney to come through. I love the curving that is the guttering of this little cottage. That should work. Put a baseline there baseline through there to get our shape okay I think that's got it there is a roof up in there with a, a window up in the roof as well that matches the roof that's on this section you probably can't see all this real easily okay so what I'll do now is I will just pop a few pins into position here because I've got to stitch this background down now so that it's not going anywhere. And I'll do some embroidery as well on it just to, um, you know, start the process of getting some interesting background stitches in place like um, burrow stitch um, and things like that. Because once we start building this house in the middle here, a lot of that area will be probably 
not accessible so I've sort of got to leave this free but secure it but then I, if I want to do anything decorative start working around the, the perimeter okay all right I think that is pretty good I've got my elements in position for the background so stitch them down make sure they're all secure I've also in the process found a couple more pieces that I think are going to work so I'm going to I also found this as well I keep picking it up it, it's in our blues a very faded old piece of quilt so whether that's got potential for over a window or I don't know so I'm going to keep that to one side I mentioned in the video a few minutes ago that the quilt pieces that I did have that I got from America have all of these anchors on them so they just didn't yeah it just didn't do it for me that's just wasn't inspiring so that's the only old quilt I had then I had this little piece which does have um, the blues so that has potential and whether I bring a little bit of red into it but I sort of not sure if I want to cut into that piece because in its entirety it's a very effective piece of quilt so it would be a shame to cut away when I have some of these types of colors and fabrics anyway so that's why I thought no that's not the piece and to put a house on that I just didn't think it'd work and then I had this little black and gray and white piece which also didn't inspire me so that was my vintage quilt so then I came back to this 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 and I also have these pieces okay so that's where I'm at with my stitchery so far so I will finish the video here I'll go away and stitch all this down and then um, I'll probably redraw my house a little bit better so that I can see it clearly and make sure all my proportions are in place. I may need to use a different pen because this is just really struggling on this, this hemp because it's so um, uh, coarse of a fabric. So I'll just bring that up to the camera so you can sort of see my structure. It's still a bit hard to see. You can make out the little chimney over to the side. And of course, then my embroidery, which is the whole reason we're here, is this little piece of embroidery. Okay, thank you everyone. And I will see you next week as we continue with the process of um, building our little houses. Okay, thank you. Bye. Hello everyone. I'm back again. I know I said goodbye, but I just had to pop back because I altered the bottom here of my piece a little bit. I found another piece of uh, hemp. To tuck in here positioned my um, piece now so I'm happy with my around the outside of beautiful fabrics a little bit of Osmerberg in the middle because it's pretty much going to be underneath the um, house anyway but in the process of rummaging for more bits I found these vintage yo-yos and this yo-yo so this is now going to be part of my box of tricks that I'm um, going to be using. And I also found this fabric. I did use this at the beginning on my first panel that I did. So I'm thinking it sort of blends with my whole project as well. So I'm thinking this here might make an appearance and I might need a pop of the pinks to sort of to lift it. But if I do wanna stay within the blue tones and lace and neutrals, there's a little blue flower there as well i'll just grab my needle book of stitchery okay so bear with me i just wanted to show you where i used the um, um, fabric earlier in my piece so that's the very first page i did um, that's it there all embroidered so it's um, quite a, a gorgeous piece of fabric. So there's an opportunity to bring a little bit of that into my cottage and it'll tie it into this piece that I did um, back on day one. It, um, yeah, I'm really thinking that this piece is gonna connect into this piece. Okay, all right, I'm definitely going to go now. So, um, I will switch the camera off. I'm happy with what I've got in the way of snippets to build on. 
with the finding there. I do have this tartan hanging around. Whether it comes in, I'm not sure, but I just can't seem to put it away. So I've definitely built up some treasures to use and I've got my background pinned so I can start stitching. Okay, everyone, I will definitely leave you now and see you all soon. Bye.